Honorable Senators, I join you today to speak in support of Bill C-15, an act respecting the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I would like to begin by acknowledging that I am speaking to you from the traditional and unceded territories of the Anishinaabe, Mississauga, and Algonquin nations. The people of these nations are the original stewards of the land that I reside on, and it is important to show our respect for their stewardship of the land by acknowledging them. As I rise to speak to this important bill, I would like to begin by reflecting on the 392 children that have now been found in unmarked graves on the grounds of former residential schools across Canada. These tragic but very predictable discoveries have brought the topic of reconciliation to the forefront of our nation's public discourse. Now, as we stand here debating this important legislation, still grieving the loss of the children, I hope that our actions in this chamber can help bring justice closer to the families. As I mentioned earlier, June is Indigenous History Month in Canada, which to me seems like a very fitting time to be debating this historic legislation. UNDRIP is an international document adopted by the United Nations in 2007 and has been ratified by over 140 countries. This declaration seeks to enforce rights that constitute the minimum standards for the survival, dignity and well-being of Indigenous peoples of the world. In Canada, UNDRIP aims to uphold the inherent rights of Métis, Inuit and First Nations, including their right to equitable health care services free from discrimination. While UNDRIP reaches far beyond health, I have, been, I have chosen to focus my remarks on this area today because of the importance the right to health has across all aspects of the lives of Indigenous people in Canada. I support Bill C-15 because it advances the aligning of Canada's laws with rights that are inherent to every Indigenous person in this country. It will also improve Canada's laws by aligning them with the constitutionally protected Aboriginal right to health found in Section 35 of the Constitution Act 1982, resulting in, among many things, better health comes for Indigenous persons and communities. UNDRIP recognizes that Indigenous health is a question of human rights and is central to human dignity. As such, it supports Indigenous health governance by providing governments with an internationally applicable and consistent policy framework. Many articles within UNDRIP pertain directly to Indigenous health and can influence positive policy outcomes. For example, Article 21 states that Indigenous people have the right to improve their social conditions, including improving their health without discrimination. This speaks directly to the need to have more Indigenous doctors, nurses, and other healthcare practitioners working within Canada's healthcare system. It also speaks to the inherent right of Indigenous people to self-determination, which is also reinforced in Article 23. Article 23 states that Indigenous people have the right to be actively involved in developing and determining health requirements. This means that Indigenous health initiatives need to be led by Indigenous peoples and be supported by governments, not the other way around, as so often is the case. UNDRIP also recognizes the inherent Indigenous rights to protect their cultural beliefs and traditional medicinal practices. In addition to affirming the right to health care free access from discrimination, Article 24 states that Indigenous peoples have the inherent right to continue using their traditional medicines and to maintain their traditional health practices. This inherent right extends to environmental conservation and the protection of traditional medicines, including plants, animals and minerals. UNDRIP recognizes that environmental wellness is interconnected with the health of Indigenous peoples. Over the long term, UNDRIP will improve Indigenous health outcomes and services in Canada in several ways, but there are some immediate concrete steps that the federal government can take to realize Canada's laws as being consistent with UNDRIP. First, we must work to resolve jurisdictional disputes between provincial and federal governments and territorial once and for all in a meaningful way. Indigenous people often do not receive the health care and services they require because of these jurisdictional disputes. For instance, the government has itself recognized the injustice and discrimination that stems from these jurisdictional disputes as demonstrated by the unanimous passing of Jordan's principle in the other place. Colleagues, we have seen time and time again that discrimination and racism in healthcare can be deadly. 
This has been demonstrated by the cases of Brian Sinclair and more recently by the death of Joyce at Taquan. We know that there are many more cases like this that go unreported. These horrific cases are shocking for many, but to those of us who know and have experienced racism and discrimination in Canada's healthcare system, these stories are all too familiar. On its own, Bill C-15 will not solve all these problems, but I do think it's a positive step forward that will lead to better outcomes for Indigenous people in Canada. Implementing an action plan to achieve UNDRIP's objectives will mean that the government will improve access to culturally appropriate and safe health care for Indigenous peoples. This must begin by fostering better relationships between federal, territorial, provincial and Indigenous governing bodies. Better education for doctors on Indigenous issues and culturally appropriate care, as well as increased access to traditional healing practices and medicines that not only benefit Indigenous communities, but can also improve Canada's overall approach to health care. My own work in the field of coerced and forced sterilization has led me to conclude that increasing patient autonomy and access to Indigenous midwives and birthing centres is a step forward and extremely important to the health of Indigenous women and their children. The current health care that Indigenous people receive is inadequate, but Bill C-15 and the implementation of UNDRIP can provide a blueprint for change. Already, UNDRIP has led to positive changes for Indigenous people in the province of British Columbia. In November 2019, BC's Legislative Assembly unanimously passed and began to implement UNDRIP as a framework for reconciliation. It has aligned BC's laws with the inherent rights outlined in UNDRIP and set up decision-making processes that provide the province with more flexibility in its agreements with Indigenous communities. This legislation has introduced transparency and predictability in the work between Indigenous peoples and provincial government. When Bill C-15 passes, I hope that it will be able to improve Canada's federal relationship with Indigenous peoples in a similar and meaningful way. Both this chamber and the other place have extensively debated a previous version of the UNDRIP bill put forward by MP Romeo Saganash in 2016. The Standing Senate Committee on Aboriginal Peoples heard from multiple witnesses that implementing UNDRIP will help recognize and affirm already existing and inherent Indigenous rights. Their testimonies echoed the recommendations from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and of the National Inquiry into the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. UNDRIP is, as is Bill C-15, a commitment to working together in the spirit of reconciliation. As my friend Ellen Gabriel so eloquently put it in her submission to APA, my support for Bill C-15 comes from a place of conviction concerning the Declaration and all the years that Indigenous peoples worked to bring the Declaration to life. The Declaration presents a clear expression for the 21st century of what Indigenous peoples have been fighting for all along. Our right to live in peace and dignity to overcome the impacts of colonization through the exercise of our rights to self-determination and to have our own Indigenous laws and traditions respected instead, instead of vilified. Bill C-15 will bring hope to Indigenous communities that real changes can be made and that things will improve. As we sit in this chamber debating this important legislation, we must be aware that Bill C-15 risks, like so many other laws, reports and studies that are just gathering dust. The implementation of UNDRIP can not only be symbolic legislation or aspirational in its outcomes, it must become a living document and a commitment to Indigenous people in Canada. Within UNDRIP, there is much potential for real solutions to be brought to the table. Senators, this is only the first step. Once we pass Bill C-15, we must get to work on making Canada a place that respects the international law and the international human rights of Indigenous people. Canadians have placed their trust in us to do our job, and we must not let them down. Miigwech, merci, thank you, merci.